Start in this one again with a learning check. So answer these questions. This is referring to kind of these guys right here. All of those is the same. Um, and then this one refers right here and this. Okay. So this stage of this egg all along here is going to be a primary oocyte. What's happening? The follicle is developing. Nothing's changing in the oocyte, but the follicle is developing throughout here. Um, here's a secondary oocyte. That's the same as, as this right here. What's released is a secondary oocyte. What's happening? Ovulation, right? What's this? This remnant here. So this has burst out the oocyte. What's left is the corpus luteum. All right. Believe it or not, we're getting close. We have one last thing to do in these videos, and that is talk about the hormones that control the ov ovulatory cycle. So I'm going to start with just, instead of drawing it out for you again, I'm going to show it to you, the HPG axis in females. And this looks pretty simple, but the regulation of this process over the month is actually really complicated. But first, I do want you to relate it to what you know already, right? You know all this already. And both FSH and LH in the female are going to be involved in the development of the follicle. And then the follicle is going to become the corpus luteum, right? These produce estrogen. Sometimes you'll see an O in front of estrogen, same thing, and progesterone. So in females, these estrogens and progesterones cause primarily estrogens, the development of these secondary sex characteristics in females, as well as the development of the follicle itself. Both estrogens and progesterone regulate this menstrual cycle to make it a 28 day cycle. One thing that's not shown in here, oh, I think I have it pop up, here we go, inhibit. Inhibin is that peptide hormone that's also produced in males, is also produced in the female gonads to feedback and turn off, um, shut off the system. It's released from the follicle and corpus luteum in varying amounts. So, we're going to go through tying this in with the ovarian and follicular cycles. It's the last big thing of this week. It's a big one. It's super cool though. Super cool. Um, and what one thing I wanted to just say right now here is that FSH is going to be involved in the development of the follicle. There is an arrow here as well, but really LH is going to be the trigger for ovulation. It's going to trigger the release of the egg from that mature follicle, um, that ultimate burst, which is ovulation, the release of the egg.